Hey, g'day guys. Calvin from The Cartoon Company. If you're doing anything with One UZs, you want to go hit that subscribe button. And uh, we're going to get into this video today. It was uh, one of my subscribers asked if I had a video on what water hoses to remove when you're doing a One UZ conversion. I've done the long version this morning. Uh, and I thought, hey, maybe some guys wanted the fast version. So I'm back at the workshop tonight. And we'll spit out the really quick version. We'll try and do that. Make this uh, about two minutes to do the quick version, including this intro. And then we'll go on to do the long version for those people who want a bit more information. And I've included uh, information about the cooling system, hoses, throttle bodies, and the hoses that you can remove. So let's get into this. The fast version. Watch hoses that you need and don't need on your 1UZ in a conversion. This one is the top radiator hose. Okay, so that goes to the top of the radiator, so you probably need that hose. Thermostat housing goes to the bottom of the radiator, okay? If you do do the old chevs, don't get confused that they go to the top. This is a modern engine with a bypass type thermostat, as explained later in the video. So you need the hose that goes to the bottom of the radiator. If you're not running a heater tank, that can go. If you've got a radiator cap on the top of the radiator, on the top of the radiator, that one can go. If there's one over this side, that can go. That one there, that one can go. Uh, that one can go. The ones under the throttle body, yeah, they can go. And this one can be blanked. A heater hose, so that is the hot side going to the, the heater core. You need that one, and you need that one. So, in your conversion, with your 1UZ, four radiator hoses is all you need. Real simple. So to the guys that wanted the fast version, hey, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And for you guys that uh, want the long version, hope this uh, what's coming up is helpful. Good morning, guys. It's Calvin from the Cartoon Company. I was asked by a YouTube viewer the other day, uh, what hoses do you blank off when you're doing a 1UZ conversion? So I thought, perfect opportunity. I hadn't done a video on this yet, specifically to this topic. Uh, I'm going to combine a little bit about the cooling system at the same time. So uh, enough talking, uh, enough looking at me. Let's look at this engine and uh, we'll show you which hoses you can and can't block off and a little bit of how the cooling system works. Okay. So here we have my wiring motor. So this is old yellow. Uh, I bought it with these ugly, ugly yellow tappet covers and while I hate the colour, it kind of stands out in my videos, so it kind of works. Now with the cooling system, this is fairly typical of what you'll get an engine looking like. They'll have a broken thermostat housing, which is really common. So I've got them in stock and, and replaced them on all the jobs I do. Uh, you've got a bleeder on the top, crank that off. So when you're bleeding the system up, you want to take that bleeder out. And you also want to check it's in good order. They're very prone to stripping now. This is the thermostat housing. They're made of hard plastic, Bakelite type product. And when they get any, if they've got any blisters inside, then they should be thrown away and replaced. Uh, and they'll also discolor. You'll find they'll, they'll go a brown, brownish color. So underneath the thermostat, now these are a bypass thermostat. Something that a lot of people get wrong is they think because this hose goes to the thermostat that this is the top hose. This is not the top hose, okay? This is the bottom hose, goes to the bottom of the radiator. And they refer to this in your parts manual as the water inlet, inlet, inlet into the engine. So this is your top hose unrestricted to the top of the radiator. Here is a stock standard saw, and here's your hose here. We were talking about the top hose, and you see it comes up here to the top of the radiator. And here's the bottom hose. Look, it goes down, down there. 
going down to the bottom of the radiator. Because those guys want to argue, that is a stock standard Sora top and bottom radiator hose. This is the top one, this is the bottom one. Okay, so we'll have a bit of a look at these housings. So I've got a little sample of housings over here. We have the very first of these have your cold start injector and this is your bypass circuit. There's an O-ring on here. Cold start injector is only on um, the 131 crowns and then the first of the Gen 1 engines. Um, they change when they changed ECUs sort of mid 92, early 93. They went away from that cold start injector. But that's for another day. Oh, now the temperature sensors. So we've got the cold start injector. Then you have your EFI temp sensor. It will look like this. Possibly green. Again, possibly discolored. So it's a little hard to get to in place. But it's tucked down under here. There's a proper green one in there. So it is a two pin sensor. That goes to the factory ECU or your aftermarket ECU. And that reads the coolant temperature for the ECU. So I'm going to call that the EFI temp sensor. Next, you have the sensor for the gauge. So that's a single wire. It's located above it, above the EFI temp sensor. So your gauge sensor is there. It is a single wire. And there is your EFI temp sensor. If you're fitting your UZ into a, a Toyota product, into a Hilux, into a Hi Ace, into a Surf, the factory sensor from the one UZ motor will work fine with the gauge in your Toyota product. If you get a one that goes full hot, like a high ace, you've missed an earth in that circuit to the dash. But these sensors do work fine. I recommend replacing the EFI temp sensors, not because they stuff out that often, more so because they break. They get brittle and ugly. And you, we want some reliability. You've got to remember, these motors first came out in 89. That's 30 years ago. Let's just double check that. 89, 99, 2009, 19, yep, 29 years. So they're old motors. Now the fan switch, the fan circuit in the UZs, they run the hydraulic fan. That's for another video. You'll see this one's been blank, but been removed. They don't have a reliable fan switch. They have another uh, sensor like this in the bottom of the radiator and another circuit some have different computer for that, for the cooling system. So there's a few different ways. So if you want a fan circuit, I add a fan switch. Uh, this one is around about a, a 98 to 96. So 98 on, 96 off, around about. Sometimes I go a little bit hotter, sometimes I go a little bit colder. And I normally mount that in the radiator. Back to these fittings. So they're very similar. Just one won't have the cold start. So they interchange on both the Gen 1s and the Gen 2s. With the only difference is that cold start. And of course, one's got a different bolt pattern there. Hey, miss. Good girl. Okay, so that, that's the top hose. Stacked on the motors. Top hose, bottom hose, bottom of the radiator. The reason being is we have a bypass thermostat. So we've got the front piece of the thermostat and the back poppet on the thermostat, the second valve. So the water feeds into the water pump and then flows around the engine, up through the holes in the head gaskets and I've done the video on head gaskets, so if you want to see where the holes are, you can have a look on that video. 
and then comes through this outlet pipe, through the top hose, out to the radiator if the thermostat is open. But when it's closed, it flows in through this bypass circuit and back into that water pump. And that allows faster warm up. It's also more efficient because that bypass circuit is completely closed off once the engine's warm. So as the warm engine comes up to temperature, the thermostat will open, the bypass circuit closes off, and the water flows out to the radiator, down the radiator or across, back up the lower hose, in through the thermostat, and down to the water pump. So guys, take your thermostat, some people think taking the thermostat out makes them run cooler, you'll get problems for the fact that that bypass circuit now allows an unrestricted flow of water to not go through the radiator. So if you're running like a radiator on the back of a four-wheel drive vehicle, we blank off that bypass circuit and then run a helper pump. But for most guys, a new good quality thermostat, which is not like this one, you can see this one's falling apart, the rubber's falling apart in here. And I always use the genuine thermostats because they work better. So with the water hoses, you'll have several different places water hoses come off on these engines. If you're running an oil cooler, the factory oil cooler, and then you'll have a big pipe coming off the bottom here, and then it'll come back onto the block. I'm not going to discuss oil coolers on this video. Uh, we don't see them very much because we see the Japanese engines. Um, I've only ever seen probably four or five engines, and I've done thousands of these engines with the oil coolers, simply because we get the Japanese ones that don't have the cooler. What we see is I will see either a water pipe hose coming off on uh, this side here, which is the left hand side. Yes, this is my right hand, but it's, this is the left hand side of the engine or the right hand side on an angle. And they will go up to a heater tank. Um, so that's the, like the expansion bottle for the cooling system. When you're doing a conversion with a radiator, with the radiator cap on the top of the radiator, Either of those can be blanked off. So here's a, another housing, and we've welded up that uh, outlet on the side where the water hose went. I'm not sure I've got one with the fitting on the other side. I don't at the moment. So there's one that had neither of them. There was no welding on that one, on those two. And it didn't have either of those fittings. That one was the big one, so that one had the oil cooler. So what I do is weld up that, that one there. If there's one on this side, I weld that up as well. And you'll see I've also welded up the one on going up to the bleeder. So what I'll do there is if you're running factory ECU with the factory idle speed control, I take all the fittings off the uh, idle speed. So I'll actually normally cut these off. And then going up to the throttle body, I give that a sort out. I'll show you that in a moment. And then going over to the back. So you'll have some hoses coming up through here, running along to the throttle body. Another hose coming around to the back. You'll see I've got this little blanker on here. Now this is off, now this is if you're not running an EGR vehicle as I remove these little blankers because they're absolutely fantastic and I fit it to the back of the engine. At the back of this one, I have another little extra fitting on here. So I'm going to blank that off today. Like so. If you're running an EGR system, um, out of America, that's where we see the EGRs. Uh, you can swap to the Japanese housing on the side, the cover on the side for the PCV valve, and then the, the water pipes going through there can all be deleted. On the bottom of the throttle body, now again, there's Gen 1 and Gen 2 throttle bodies. 
all of them, all the hoses, if you use the system, can be removed. And it does make getting into the starter motor and all those sorts of things really, really easy. So again, I've done a video on uh, modifying this, the throttle body. As you can see, this one isn't quite looking standard. And I've removed the water hoses off, the water pipes off this throttle body. We'll just flick it over and have a look. There we go. I've actually ground them right off, tidied it right up so they... Not that anyone can see it, but it just makes me feel better. So no water hoses on the throttle body, no water hoses left on the front housing. So basically at the end of my job, I end up with a top and a bottom radiator hose and some heater hoses. That's all the hoses that I end up with on the engine. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to talk about some guys blank up the heaters and they just loop them. This one's actually got a, a, a stopper in there uh, the, it's to do with the same thing as the bypass circuit. If you just join these together, you have a gallery of water that's not going through a heat exchanger of any kind. And over time, you can have a, a situation where it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter because it's not getting cooled. Hey, some guys get away with it, but that isn't the norm. I see far more people having problems because they've just linked it over. I've only linked this one because when I run it on the bench on a radiator, I'm only going to run it for a couple of minutes and I don't want the water oozing out everywhere. Now there are some differences in these back pipes as well while we're back here and the heater outlet off the back of the water pump. So we'll go have a look. I've got a couple of housings. Now I happen to have uh, this one which the little water outlet on the back, we've actually welded up. We've, we've uh, just cut it off. Uh, that was going to be in a vehicle with very tight clearance on the back. It's much smaller. So this is a UCF-10 water outlet. And this is a UCF-20. We've got the longer hose. Sorry, we've got the longer pipe. And it's physically a little bit smaller. Some of them also have the EGR going through it. Uh, again, we don't see the EGR motors very often because they come out of the USA, America, sometimes in Europe, and we just don't get those import motors over here. We get the Japanese ones. Um, but I have worked on a couple. Oh, the factory New Zealand new ones. The New Zealand new vehicles were sold with EGR as well. So there's the difference between a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 rear crossover pipe. Both can be interchanged, uh, but you'll find the wiring, if you're using a standard wiring, will foul a little bit. A few other things to be conscious on the cooling system is the frost plugs. They do actually have some uh, at the front and the back of the heads. As I've said before, these heads uh, are interchangeable. You can put the left on the right, right on the left, swap around with the cams. So the frost plugs, um, I've seen a few in jet boats. Raw water have been corroded out. And there's also a fitting on the side here. This one here, I do recommend popping that off and uh, resealing it when you're doing a conversion. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Um, and you understand a little bit more about the cooling systems and what hoses you can and can't remove and, and how the system works. We'll talk to you later.